Hi, I'm Sebastian, product manager here at Abase. If you like this video, please like it as well as subscribe to our channel. It really helps us grow. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about what is GraphQL and how can it actually help development teams develop faster. First off, what even is GraphQL? Well, GraphQL is actually a query language for web APIs. In the name itself, query language is what the QL stands for. And that said, GraphQL is entirely unlike anything in the past that developers are used to dealing with when interacting or interfacing with standard web APIs. We can actually look at this difference right now with a side-by-side -side demonstration. So most of the time when a developer is interfacing with a standard web API, they're using a REST API, in which case there's multiple endpoints for any resources that they might need back. For example, here we're gonna look at the Yelp API and we're gonna look for a list of businesses near this address, 800 West Ave. I'm gonna send this request and as we can see, we get a bunch of information back or a bunch of data back all in JSON format. We can see that for every business it's returning to us, we're getting the ID, alias, name, image URL, some categories, even coordinates, transactions, the location all this information. Now, if we needed more information about a single business, for example, this one right up top, we would need to take its ID, go over to another endpoint, and make a request to that endpoint to then get back the more detailed data. Now, maybe in this endpoint here, we only need a few fields, which means the API actually sent us more information or if the information about this business that we need is not here, we'd actually have to wait on a backend developer to go expose that data and then query the endpoint again. Now, what's really cool and different about GraphQL is we are actually able to write a query on the front end. We can see that right here, where we are hitting the same search endpoint that we did originally, and for every business, we are then telling it exactly what we want. In this case, the ID, the name, the location, the reviews, and the author of those reviews being the user. We run this query too. What we can see is the information that we get back is exactly in the format of what we asked for with no less information and nothing more. Plus, if we wanted to update this query in real time, let's say we didn't need the name, we could just delete that field right from our query, run it again, and we get the new updated query back not having the unnecessary fields. And of course, this would work for appending new fields as well. The other great thing about this is every GraphQL query that we would make would all be to the exact same endpoint. So you never have to run around looking for different documentation on which endpoint does what or what you can expect back from that endpoint. It's all already declared. One more really cool thing to mention about GraphQL 2, which we saw in that example, is that GraphQL makes relational querying super simple to where you can just reference the relationship to get back the information rather than go find the endpoint for that specific resource. And all of this means that developers get to make less API calls than they would have to if otherwise using a REST API. What's also important to understand is GraphQL is actually a specification, not an implementation. This means that GraphQL isn't actually a technology, but a set of rules and concepts that any company or developer can go out using their favorite framework or language and actually build their own implementation of. This is really awesome because it allows a lot of creativity and innovation in any GraphQL implementation. So with all that said, there's really two sides to any GraphQL project, the client side and the server side, or the front end and back end. This means that you can just use an existing GraphQL API in your projects if you want to, without having to learn all the server side stuff, kind of like we just did with the Yelp API. Or if your team wants to build and maintain their own GraphQL server, you can do so using pretty much any coding language. On the client side, there are tons of tools that make it easier to interface with a GraphQL API. Under the hood, know that these all boil down to HTTP POST requests. However, the client tools make it way easier to interface with these APIs, as they'll usually handle passing variables, setting headers, or even document validation. So at this point, we actually have a great idea of what GraphQL is. However, how does it actually help development teams develop faster? The schema you define when building a GraphQL API should encapsulate the entire data model of your project. And once this API gets set up, suddenly client-side developers are able to work independently of back-end teams. 
because all the data that they might require in any of the views that they're building is now available through the graph. This is way different from in the REST world in which a specific endpoint predetermines any information that that client-side developer would have access to, often resulting in too little or even too much data being sent back to the client. If you found this video helpful, please like it as well as subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.